Good day to everyone. Welcome again to this new video of Cancer Diet. We will start not without asking God for guidance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are going to talk about a very significant topic and we need your help, your guidance. Give us wisdom as we learn more on how to take care of our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, amen. Well, diet, of course, for cancer is not an easy thing. Honestly speaking, we may not even finish everything we have to say. But nevertheless, we will give some key points, the most significant ones, that you can start at least thinking and meditating on what you're going to do. You may be, or you may have somebody with cancer that is um, despair, maybe depressed, sad, concerned, in anxiety. We don't have to be that way. There's still a way out, and we want that for each one of us. So let me help you now in taking you through this cancer diet. What should we do? First things first, God is first. So don't forget that. If you have any problems, you know, ask God to reveal to you if there is anything, any sin or wrong that you have done to anyone. If there is any problem with relatives, you know, friends, even enemies, make sure you put everything in place. Then I encourage you to read Proverbs 28, 13. Very important verse that says, He that covered his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall find mercy. That means we have a requirement for us to be healed or saved, which is the same word. There is no difference between one and the other one. I will not take time for defining those two terms which are the same, and this topic, which I did also in the topic of God's healing art, and you're welcome to watch that video. But today, I want to emphasize that we need to ask for forgiveness, otherwise our healing does not come from God. You may see from the book, Ministry of Healing 228, to those who desire prayer for the sick, restoration to health, it should be made plain, that's my work, I have to make it plain to you that the violation of God's law, either natural in our bodies or in the spiritual realm, Ten Commandments, both of them is sin. So whether you break the laws in your body, you treat your body in not in a good way, you're doing things that are wrong and you destroy your body, it is a sin to do it. It is also sin to damage your mind. So both of them in the Ten Commandments or in the physical body, both are a sin. And that, in order for them to receive his blessing, sin must be confessed and forsaken. So if there is anything wrong you have done to your body, you must ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord for guidance. That's why Psalm 139, 23 and 24 also says, Search me, O God, and know mine heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. All right, what to do in terms of our diet? Well, it's important to know that many of the cases of cancers today are becoming very hard. The cancers are being more aggressive. We are not really playing with this and we need to be serious about it. That's the reason why I cannot hide it. You have to tell you the truth. Many cases of cancer cannot make it through unless they follow the raw diet. What is the reason we have the raw diet as important in the cancer treatment. The raw diet is important in the cancer treatment because when we eat, the more nutrition we get, it's only when we eat 100% raw. When you eat 100% raw, your absorption of nutrients is 30% against 3% that is the highest we can absorb in regular food. It's amazing. But according to the studies, that's the only thing we can get when eating regular food, 3%. Now, we definitely know that it's not an easy diet. We have gone away from that diet for a long time. But we know that it is the best. So whether you we like it or not, that's not the point. The point is, it's the healthiest diet and many cases cannot make it 
through the cancer if they don't change their diet. I have seen myself many cases where they have done the raw diet. I recently had a case of uh, cancer in the uterus when they changed the raw diet. They didn't even go to uh, other treatment modalities because they did not need. But sometimes it is um, necessary to do the sacrifice and I encourage you if you want to learn and go through this, you, you can do it. There are many things you can go online, watch videos, people in, in institutions. When I work in the United States with an institution where I was trained, Yuchi Pines Institute, we used to see a lot of cancer patients also and guide them in the diet that they should follow so you can learn how to eat properly for your cancer problem. So what is the key point in the raw diet? Raw diet is very foreign to us. We don't know what it is. We have not been doing it for a long time maybe or we never did it. Honestly, majority of us don't even know what raw diet is. People sometimes, I tell them raw diet and they said, so how many times I should eat rice? I said, no, 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 no rice. You will not be able to eat rice in a raw diet unless you sprout it and you make sure it doesn't spoil. And most of the time what you're eating is the plant, not the rice itself, so it's not the same. So being honest with you, raw diet is raw, meaning nothing cooked, nothing placed on the fire. Everything is raw, as the word it says. So what is the point? Raw diet has one significant problem or disadvantage. It is hard to give taste to the vegetable. That's the most significant problem. Why? When we talk about fruits, mostly no, much people don't have a problem with thinking about even eating a mango, an apple, or eating a papaya. There is taste in the fruits. We don't have a problem with that. But when we talk about eating alobate saluyu alone, no one will seem to be glad to do it. So the point is how to make it in a way that is tasty, that is not a punishment, the treatment that you're using for cancer. Well, there are many things that we can use and that's why I want to emphasize these points now. The most important thing in the vegetables to make it palatable for the cancer diet is to use the fats that we have uh, from God. He gave us. For example, as you see in the screen, we have avocados, we have cashews, and we also have coconut, shredded coconut, which all of them could be found in a raw form. It has been roasted, it has been uh, processed, or it has been uh, put in a dehydrator. We, we will not consider that in the raw diet. It must be raw. And for cashews, make sure you buy the raw cashews. Then make sure you wash them previously well so you can use them for the salad that you're making or even fruits because you can use it for the fruits also. So don't forget, you need that for the taste. The other thing that is important to remember for the taste on the vegetables is the herbs for seasoning or herbs for flavoring. We are not talking about commercialized processed seasoning. No, we are talking about herbs that give flavor. Some people are confused with the word seasoning because they tend to link that to MSG's monosodium glutamate and they tend to link the word seasoning with a processed chicken broth maybe or something like that. No, we are not talking about that. We're talking about herbs for flavor. Example, oregano, thyme, sage, rosemary, dill, turmeric, all those herbs that you can use for uh, tarragon and you name it, many others basil leaf, more. Of course, we don't emphasize or we don't use the hot chili or spicy food as they are irritants to the system. I do not recommend myself the use of chili pepper for food. I do use it and recommend sometimes for cases like asthma attack, heart attack, for saving the life of someone but not as a daily regular use, not even for hypertension. I do not recommend it. But I have another reason for that and I will not discuss that in this video. The point is we can use those herbs that are good for seasoning to make the flavor of the food better. So if you use the fats that God gives you in moderation, of course, remember one sixth of the plate, no more than that. That is the measurement, one sixth of the plate. So make sure you're careful whenever using the fats. If you have a bag of peanut, do not eat it all because that will be 
detrimental to your body, it is not correct. It is intemperance. All right, what are the other things that will be probably useful? Is to remember that there are proteins that you can get in your diet and you don't have to worry about protein intake. Where do you get your proteins? Mostly everything has protein. And if you want to study more about that, I do recommend you watch the video about osteoporosis or kidney failure where I have talked about this uh, more abundantly. So the proteins, you can get it from the beans, you can get it from many things, even rice, squash, tomatoes, pumpkins, everything, oats, you get protein from them, even the sprouts. So the idea is that you can use especially the sprouts. Why? Because they are more digestible. There is more vitamins and minerals available in the sprouts and there is also enzymatic activity in the sprouts. We are not suggesting to use the raw beans. No, we are suggesting to use the sprouts. I just put a picture of the beans as you can see in the screen. So you can have an idea which beans you can use. You can use the red mungos, you can use the uh, tauri, the golden mungos, you can use the black beans, you can use the uh, and many others. Okay, at this point, talking about the sprout, which is good for the diet when we talk about uh, cancers, they are not going to give flavor to the food, they are going to give you nutrients. They are going to give you life because they are bringing vitamins and minerals and enzymes, three major things that are important in the sprouts. Uh, enzymes, vitamins and minerals because as the plant is growing, it has enzymes to digest all the macronutrients in the bean that are there, carbohydrates, lipids and, uh, or fats and proteins, so the plant can grow. And as the little seed is breaking down these things with its own enzymes, you will get the benefit of using those enzymes in your body when you are eating it. Therefore, when you cook them, there is no enzymes. So now talking about a cancer diet, we definitely need to remember that we are going to use these in a raw form. And as I said, they are not really tasty. They don't have in themselves taste. As a matter of fact, some of them are actually having a strong flavor sometimes, not too strong. They are kind of mild, but it's also good to remember that sprouts should not be left for so long that they will become bitter. So use them as soon as you can, as soon as they are available and don't let it keep growing until a plant that has more fiber and so on. You're not eating the plant, you're eating the sprouts, so that's important to remember. The sprouts, I will explain now the new technique that I have been developing at home, because you may have watched already the video about the ground, the new, the new system that I uh, taught before, and how to do sprouting, which is good. You just have to cut the sprout from the ground level, and then you can use it, but you lose the uh, roots. And if you want to use the roots, there's a new technique that I have been using and teaching to people about sprouting. So this is it, it's very simple. You can get a mesh, like the mesh that you use for windows, or you can get a, even a strainer, or anything that is similar, or a very thin uh, or small holes a container, and it could be plastic, could be metal, either way, but something that is easy to drain. Then you are going to find small pebbles, small pebbles, gravel, the small ones, enough that they are not sand, they are bigger than sand, but not as big as a stone. When you get these pebbles, you can wash them thoroughly if you want, and you can put them in the tray and leave it in a place where you remember and you can keep watering them. You put the beans in that tray, even cover with some of the gravel or some of the pebbles, and you keep watering them. After a few days, the sprout is up. As simple as that, as long as the heat is there, the sprouts are going to be growing. I have found that the sprouts grow even faster with the gravel than with the uh, ground and even more than the ones that we normally do in the jar as we were taught before, or as I learned when I was beginning to learn how to do sprouting. Now, if you do this and you keep watering, you will see the plants growing and they will become even green and keep growing. What you want is as soon as the plant is tenderly going up a little green, you can use it at that moment. And then the only thing you have to do is just pull it slowly shake the gravel out, it will be filling, 
peeling off, okay, falling apart and then you rinse it in water. You do not have to be washing with soap and so on because if you leave it as it is, just rinse it with water to get the gravel out and be, be, remember that before you wash the gravel also and you have been using clean water also, even drinking water if you want, the sprout is not really contaminated. So if you pull it out, just rinse it well and you put it in your salad and mix it with the flavoring that you have, the dressings or whatever and I will explain to you more uh, in detail about that later. But then you do not have to rinse it so much and you can use it directly for eating. That will have even a higher content of vitamin B12 for your own benefits. And remember do not leave the sprout so long that it will be bitter um, if it is too big. And that will be your source of protein. Protein, there is protein in anything. So do not worry about protein, you will have too much, do not worry. And even if you have a doubt, you are concerned, just watch the video where I explain that kidney failure or osteoporosis. The next question that comes to the mind is, what is a vegetable? What are the vegetables? And remember in the presentation of basics of nutrition and nutrition 2, I cover the fact that we should not mix fruits and vegetables at the same meal. There are many people recommending cancer patients to do juicing or smoothings with uh, celery for example, uh, green leaves like uh, camote and so on and then apples. I do not recommend. One of the reasons is because of the cancer fighting elements in those things and the second reason is because it gives flavor to the smoothie. But God is clear to us that he says that we should not combine fruits and vegetables with the same meal. This causes disturbance of the brain and some other digestive issues, especially fermentation. Therefore, following what God has given us as a guideline, I do not recommend those kind of juices. Now what is a vegetable? As you can see in the screen, just to remind you, for example, tomato, the lettuce or cabbages, we have the celery, the broccoli, the sitao or string beans, we have the um, peppers, we have the cauliflower, eggplants, we have upos, we have pepinos, we have saluyo, we have alubate. All of them can be eaten raw. Eggplants? Yes. For example, giving examples, okay. Example at home, we can have a big salad a container with eggplant, we wash it, we cut it in small pieces, make sure there is no worms inside and then when it's ready you can chop some tomatoes also raw, you can put some calamansi, basil leaves, salt and ready to eat. That is one of the salads that we make at home often and that's me, that's my family, even my children and we enjoy it because we have learned to appreciate the way of <coughs> God's diet in a healthy and very pleasant way. We are not imitating the taste of the world. We are not imitating the taste of all these things that Satan has put in the world to kill people. We never recommend imitating taste. We are only learning to appreciate God's food in a pleasant way. So we have the upo, we have the pepino, saluyo and alubate as examples of vegetables. Then what is a fruit? We have mangoes, we have cashew fruits, we have bananas, we have papayas, duhat. Do not mix these fruits with those vegetables. So the next question that comes in the raw diet for the cancer patients is this. Where do you get your carbohydrates? Definitely you will not have the complex carbohydrates that you get in rice, camote, uh, you know even cassava or oats, wheat, bread and all those things. You will not have any of those because those are complex carbohydrates and they normally have to be cooked. Some people have suggested that we can eat a camote in baggy, camote, sweet potato, raw, which I have done myself but some people have not recommended so I do not want to recommend it. But anyhow, there are things that we can do that we know it is right, we do not have to doubt it. For example, eating carrots raw. Everybody knows we can eat carrots raw. We can eat sinkamas or jicamas and um, part of the root crops, part of the carbs because they are heavier in carbohydrates. 
We can also use um, the raw root beets or sugar beets or red beets, however you want to call it. There are different names. In the Philippines, I have found that they call it more sugar beets. Okay, anyway, that is another way of uh, intaking carbohydrates in the uh, raw diet. The other one will be the white radishes. Very affordable. Uh, you people can find it in most of the markets, the raw white radish. There are other radishes, but this is the most common. You, you cannot find easily the red radish, but if you have, you can use it. So that's where you can get your carbohydrates. If you use some of the carbohydrates from here, you will have more energy because it's a little more complex than eating any vegetable. It has more carbohydrate. It's not complex as eating, as I said, rice, oats, and so on, but you can have a heavier carbohydrate by eating these root crops in your diet. Remember, how will you give flavor to this? to your salad. Let's give an example. Let's go back. Let's say that you have carrots and you have, let's say, sinkamas. Uh, two elements. Don't mix so many ingredients. Let's say for today, for this morning breakfast, you have carrots, sinkamas, and you chop them well. We wash them, chop them well. There are people that don't have teeth and they want to do it uh, shredded or grated. Fine, no problem. Let's go back and some of the ideas of vegetables. Let's say you have saluyo and you have pepino, for example. Saluyo and pepino, great. And those, those are four already. Then what will you do? Let's say that you have um, shredded coconut. Okay, what you can do is you can mix shredded coconut with basil leaf and calamansi. Just that, leave it simple, not so complicated. Then you blend that and the mixture of the leaves with the carrots and the sinkamas, you pour on top this dressing that will give an idea of flavor to your um, salad. Now, let's give an example of some of the dressing salad that I will suggest as a list. Example number one, cashew nuts, onions, calamansi. This is just an example. You have to be a little bit creative when you go to the kitchen. Next one. Grated coconut, garlic, and basil leaves. Next one. Newly harvested shelled peanuts. Remember, peanuts are a bean. Peanuts have to be soaked in water and cooked for a long time, especially if they are well dehydrated. If they are well dehydrated and stored as a bean for many, many months, you have to cook it really well. Therefore, you have to, you know, put the fire in three hours, six hours, and make sure that it's soft when you take it out to be able to eat it. Otherwise, they create problems, allergies, and even autoimmune diseases. If there is also, you know, storage problems, there will be maybe mold in it, and you want to kill all that. So as long as it's newly harvested, it's okay, because it's new, number one. Number two, it is possible to eat it raw. You don't have to cook it newly shelled, harvested peanuts will be able to eat it raw and make a dressing with it, with onions maybe and oregano leaves. That's another example of a dressing. Next example is tomato, calamansi, and cucumber, just like that. Maybe a little bit of salt of it. And another one is buco meat, calamansi, and carrot. And of course, you add salt to the desire whatever you think is necessary for your taste. Don't exceed, the excessive use of salt will be damaging to your body. But a little bit for the taste is good. So those are all examples of dressings that we can use for those salads when you're eating in the raw diet. And let's say this is breakfast, because you prefer breakfast with vegetables. That's what I recommend, that's what I prefer. In the case of fruits, then you can use still some of these dressings, for example, the um, one with cashew, onions, maybe. If you don't want calamansi, fine. But you can make a, a, a dressing with uh, raisins, maybe. Instead of onions and calamansi, you can have cashew nuts, raisins, and put on top of pineapples with uh, tamarind pulp. I don't know, whatever you find available. What's the fruit that you have at home? 
And then think about the combinations that will not be bad for the taste of the person. Some people don't like tamarind, okay, fine. I have found tamarind to be very nice to mix it with some other things like papaya or a mango, for example. Of course, you have to take the seeds out and then you blend it so the tamarind is um, easier to digest because it's, it's sometimes hard on the teeth if you, especially if they are not ripe. It should not be even eaten that way. All right, so let's just review. The raw diet, the most important thing is the taste of the vegetables. Fruits are not difficult. You can have carrots with sinkamas or one day one, another day another one. You can have also uh, fruit, for example, mango and papaya, you name it. You can have pomelo, and uh, tandarins or um, apples. You can have, you name it, banana or duhad. Oh, the greatest thing for cancer is duhad. Those are the purple fruits. All the purple fruit, fruits, of course, in the Philippines we don't have blueberries, but in the U.S., blueberries, strawberries, you know, the blackberries, all of them are very high in anti-cancer flavonoids that are really good for our bodies, antioxidants. But in general, most of the fruits are really good for our bodies. Guiabano, or so-called soursop. Guanabana in Espanol. All of them are very good for cancer. There are other fruits that are good for cancer, like noni. So-called in the Philippine language, in Tagalog, apatot. Uh, that one is a little numbing for the tongue. When you eat apatot or noni, you will feel numbed in the tongue, but it is also good for cancer. There's actually some companies in the U.S. and Costa Rica that sell noni juice for cancer patients because of the properties anti-cancer. You can also use other fruits, um, especially pomelo with the skin and seeds, because they have also properties anti-cancer, as a smoothie, and we will talk about that later. All right, watch it pack. Wedge it pack, I will not um, stay too long in this one because we have a whole video explaining how to use the wedge it pack. The reason I have been recommending wedge it pack for people is because in the Philippines it's very hard to do fever treatments. In the United States where I was trained, I used to do fever treatment for my patients because it's very good for increasing the heat of the body and killing cancer cells. Whenever you bring the body to a very high heat, the cancer cells will start dying. And you can actually um, increase the heat of the body all the way up in very high levels, um, degrees of heat. But uh, the only thing we have to consider is always to keep the head of the patient cold. As long as the head of the patient is cold, there is no problems with um, seizures or damage of the brain or anything. As long as the patient is drinking water before and during the treatment, there is no need of worrying about the fever treatment. But the fever treatment has to be done in a tub. It's a place where you have a lot of water. It's a container. Normally in the United States, tubs are very common. In the Philippines are very rare. We cannot use basically fever treatment here. There are some places I have heard that do have fever treatments in their meats. That's a great thing, but the majority are not able to do so. The only place that I have seen more available for people is the hot springs in Palawan, but it's not all over the Philippines either. But if you have a hot spring nearby you and you want to go for treatments, for sure. I have some people going to the hot springs to do treatments that I know, and they enjoy it because they like hot water. So the idea is if you go to a hot spring and you go inside the water all the way to the neck and you stay there, you're going to sweat. Even your face will sweat because it's hot. Your heart rate will increase. Tachycardia will come because of the vasodilation of the vessels when you're in the water. Your pressure actually goes low because of the dilation of the vessels. The vessels becomes bigger and then the um, circulation of the body, the whole body is better. Your skin got, gets red because the blood is going all over the system. So the toxicity is lower because you are going to be sweating more, detoxing from uh, many things that you have inside. So the fever treatment or going into a hot tub like that is very good. The only concern, the only care that you have to have is that the head of the person remains cold and they have been drinking water before and during. 
The reason is if you don't have enough water in your system when you are sweating, even inside the water, you may have low hydration and then have a problem with the electrolyte balance or even a heat stroke if you are not really careful about it. Seizures can come if your head gets really hot, you are not able to bring the uh, heat down in the head, you can have problem too. But if somebody is with you and is helping you to keep the head cold and you're drinking water, you should have no problem. It's just a normal thing. There's no need of fear in being in the water. Water is accessible to everyone and we can all have it. You don't have to spend in it. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. It's available. The only thing is you have to be careful with the little details. So wet sheet pack is another way that it is very convenient, very affordable, accessible to the people in the Philippines and I think you can take advantage of it. So please go and watch the video about wet sheet pack. We have done it already. It's in the files and just go and look for it. There are some other videos about wet sheet pack online. You can watch them. I've, I've gone myself through it and I have recommended to some people. But I think I will um, prefer that you watch the ones that we have done for the Philippines so you can see what are the details that are more um, in terms of the Philippine environment that will be better for you. So I don't stay more long, longer than that. And then we'll continue with the next things. The next thing that we have to remember, especially in the diet for cancer, is that you have to eliminate all sugar and sweeteners. That, that's in, that includes even honey, cane, sugar, sugar cane, or whatever. You, all of that you, sh you should eliminate it. Why? Because sugar, especially the table sugar, it's, uh, that is refined, it's very bad for the cancer. It feeds cancer. Some people have asked me, so Doc, what happened with the sweet fruits? Well, yeah, normally we recommend not to eat so many of the fruit, the sweet fruits, but in general, you shouldn't have any problem with the fruits. And the problem is the refined sugar, because remember, the fruits have the fiber. That's why we don't recommend really the juicing system. But we'll talk about that later. The point is that um, fruits are not as eating sugar. But if you want to be careful and give your body more immunity, more strength, and you want to avoid the fruits, even the sweet ones, fine. If you want to depend only on vegetable meals for a little while to give more strength to your body, not to give some taxing effect to the body, it's your choice. I don't think it's a problem, but if you want, you can do so. But for sure, all the sweeteners, you should eliminate it because the cancer grows in sugar. The major thing that feeds cancers are sugar, oil, animal products, especially cow milk and MSG. So those are the main things you have to be careful. But we will talk about that. So elimination of sugar, because they are cancer feeders, elimination of all vegetable oils, especially olive oil, which is the most detrimental of the old oils. And the next second but worst oil in the world is coconut oil. Those are damaging to the arteries and they will also cause problems on the cancer because they feed the cancer. Cancer likes sweets and oils. The next thing you have to eliminate is all dairy products. According to Dr. Campbell in the China study, we know that the most significant cause of cancer in the world today is the consumption of cow milk and derivatives or milk products. All protein, actually, all animal protein can causes cancer, according to his research in the China study, but the most significant one is cow milk. So whether you believe before that milk was actually better than eating flesh, we know today by science that it is not. So be careful with what you may have learned or we believe because it is not so. You study the uh, scientific evidence and it is there. Next one that we have to consider is the steam bath or hot food bath. If wet sheet pack is not possible, you can use the steam bath or uh, hot food bath. There are some uh, new modalities that we have been developing and this is something that I will thank God that my queen was able to develop. God told her one day what to do. She was looking for options and what she did is she asked me, can you cut one of these uh, gasoline big metallic containers, you know, this round big that people use for retaining water. They normally are used for gasoline um, storage. So what I did is I cut it in three-fourth area and one-fourth size. So it's 
from the tank one fourth of the area and um, three fourths the rest. I cut it right there. And the smaller section, I put it in the sun. I put sand in it from the beach or from other place. You can get sand and just put it in and put it in a place where there is a sun during the day. When the sun hits it, it make it really, really hot. So what she did is she went with her wedgie pad plastic, the ones that she uses for that, and of course her clothing, and a wet sheet if it's possible. And then she wrapped herself with that, even with the plastic, and she went and sat on the sand. And of course she kept drinking water or pouring uh, some hot, uh, cold water on the head to keep it cool. One of my children may help, or one of my, uh, or myself can help, and she will keep her head cold and drink water, and that treatment is really good. She likes that treatment for her own. Uh, those are modalities, things that you can do. If you have the steam bath, you can do so, or the hot food bath is another way of heating up the body. There are other ways of heating up the body, especially to increase the immune system, and that is hot enemas. Many people don't ever know more about lavativas or enemas, but they are good also to heat up the system because remember, in the intestines, we have 70% of the immune system, we would say. There is a lot of uh, nodes and uh, centers from the immune system that will help the immunity when you heat up the intestine. And by doing an enema, you can increase the immune system, the phagocytosis of the cells, the white blood cells, the capacity to eat cells or bacteria in case of cancer to eat up uh, cancer cells. Therefore, you will increase the diapedesis, which is the um, way the cells go out into the tissue to fight cancer cells or any other infection. So it's not only for cancer, it can be used for any infection, lung infection, pneumonia, and many other things, even infections from a cut, whatever. But these are all uh, treatments that you can do to increase the heat. There is actually a machine that I used to recommend for patients when I was in the U.S. It's called uh, light therapy. You go in online and you can find that machine. It costs maybe like $361 when I was at, at, at that time. And it is a probe, it's just a machine that heat up, and it's a probe that you can put some kind of globe or plastic and introducing the anus and you heat up up to nine, the degrees, well, it's not nine degrees, it's just the capacity of the machine. And you can do that for 20 minutes twice a day, depending on what kind of uh, effect you want. If it's for prostate, if it's for the uh, immune system or other areas of the body, even pelvic areas, you know, even uterus and so on. But most of the time people will use it for increasing immune system for prostate and hemorrhoids. Uh, there are other ways you can do it, as I said, with the lavativa or enema. Now let's talk about poultices. There are areas of the body that the cancers may be exposed or very near the skin. Uh, you still can do poultices in deeper areas, but the poultices that we recommend are these. One of the best healing uh, poultices is onion slices, very simple. Some people use it smashed but you have to be careful because it becomes very messy. A lot of liquid coming from the onions. Remember, the onions are very juicy. So if you have that, then it will be just wetting around if you're not careful. But if you are careful with it, you can have an onion poultice. I rather have it onion slices, which is, are not so messy. But those are all options. And you can use them overnight over the area of the cancer. Another poultice that is important to use, or remember, oh, by the way, I didn't mention clay. Onion, poultices, or clay. Clay also can be used as a poultice overnight. You can use it oh, during the day too, but sometimes people are busy. They cannot use it. Or if it's onion, the smell will be not so um, pleasant for the friends or relatives maybe. But if you can do it, for sure. You can have an onion slice, you can have a clay poultice, either one, or maybe the clay during the day, the onions during the night, either way, you could do so. There's another poultice that I've been recommending also for the cancer diet, and that is the charcoal and cassava. People have used charcoal alone for many, you know, cases, 
but I do recommend also the charcoal cassava, grated cassava mixed with some charcoal and then put it on the area of the cancer and use, use it overnight. Most of the time is the case. All those are options for cancer. The next thing that I would recommend is the use of turmeric because it is anti-cancer, actually has some properties anti-cancer, curcuma or turmeric or luyandilao and tagalog. And also the papaya leaves, you can use those because both of them have anti-cancer properties. The papaya leaves can be eaten just like that, pieces, the old ones, the new ones, yes. Most people prefer to use the young ones. It's okay, either way, you can use them, all of them work. And normally you can do it by eating the plant or the, or the leaves or using a juice. You can make a juice of the leaves and drink it. One fourth of a cup if you are thinking about using it with the meal. So it's not so much for the digestion of the system. If it's in between meals, it's considered an herb. You can do even one cup if you want, but it's very bitter. So if you want to use it maybe with a buco juice in between meals, no meat of the, or no pulp of the buco, you can do it. You remember the pulp? Um, it will be considered food, so it's better to eat it during the, the meal time. Even it's good for the salad, for dressings, remember I told you. All right, the next thing that we want to talk about cancer is this. Sunbathing. Now sunbathing, many people have been afraid, and I have talked about this topic in other presentations, so I will not dwell much about it. I even mention it in other presentations because sunbathing is basically basic for every one of us. We have a deficiency of vitamin D3 in the world, in the United States is worse, 60% of the world and 90% in the US. Philippines, I don't have any records, I don't know exactly how much, but knowing the custom, it should be even lower maybe than the whole world because in the Philippines most people believe that the sun kills or damages your skin. So I, we know that um, it has to be a, a little bit of research and study for you to be able to uh, see what I am saying. But I encourage you, I have done myself studies about it, so I have been studying about sun for more than approximately 10 years. And I have been doing sunbathing myself with my family to be able to recover our vitamin D3, and thank God we have been able to get better into that. And sunbathing is the way to go, it's what God gave us, it is what he intended it to be. So why to be afraid now, when it was God's plan since the beginning? God never made mistakes, so it was not that he made a mistake. Yeah, there are some things we have to be careful, like the ozone layer. If you're eating oils in the diet, you really want to know what is the cause of skin cancer, which I cover in that presentation. And as long as you don't have those factors in the meats, you don't have to worry about skin cancer. And the elimination of oil is essential, that you don't use oils. One, because it feeds the cancer, and second, because it causes skin cancer. So let's keep it in mind. Now one of the reasons I really recommend also the sunbathing, especially for cancer patients, is because we know now that um, vitamin D level is very important to prevent cancers and also when fighting cancers. Because when the cells do not have vitamin D3, when the body doesn't have vitamin D3, we have the problem that the cells starts to differentiate and lose the communication between cells in the tight junction. As you can see in the screen, there are some channels of communication between cells that are called tight junctions. If, they, if we don't have vitamin D3, those tight junction communications between the cells are broken, destroyed. Therefore, there will be no communication in between the cells among them and no sharing. Therefore, they will start differentiating and making cancer. I talk about that in other topics, so you can review them. Let's talk about juicing or regular dying. All right. Honestly speaking, I myself used to use a lot of juicing for some cases. Uh, in my knowledge and experience, as I was learning, I thought that it was good. Some people have guided me into that. I have seen some people doing it, and I thought it was good. Until I received some documents and research that are very valuable. I really appreciate Dr. John Clark for his contribution to our world. All the research and um, work that he has been doing 
either in the US or in Australia. I will recommend you if you ever meet with Dr. John Clark or find his files in www.rev14.com, Northern Light Education and Ministry. That's a very good one. You can study and learn many things from them. It's a family that is looking for uh, doing what God tells us to do, and he's helping many people uh, in their sicknesses. He's an orthopedic surgeon who is now in Australia. You're welcome to contact him and his family. I highly recommend him and his ministry. And I have learned myself from him many things. I, I even talked to him while I was in the U.S. with him to learn more things about orthopedics, and he taught me many things, um, and I learned from him a lot. Juicing versus regular diet. He has a document uh, regarding that, and you can download it from his web, or you can ask him about it, where he has done some research regarding the benefits or side effects of juicing. I do not recommend juicing as an all-time effect. You can use it sometimes. It has a place for some cases, some patients, but it's not the best for regular things. Beside that, it's very important that you remember some aspect. Example, eating in between meals. When you have juicing, this amount of water with liquid and uh, also carbohydrates and all that in the juicing, especially now that they are combining vegetables and fruit, and you do that in between the meals, not even five hours from one meal to the other one, it is not the best. Now, when you have fiber, we don't consider it juicing, we consider it smoothie, and that should be taken with the meals. When we talk about juicing and we talk about no fiber, only nutrients, you know, carbohydrates, the sugars and the uh, other elements, vitamins and minerals, mm, there is still digestion, there is still enzymatic activity because of the high level of sugars, especially when you're talking about carrots. If you're combining green leafy vegetables with carrots, which is high in in the uh, little complex sugars, you will have to do some digestion for it. We don't consider it a nutrient, um, uh, basically vitamins and minerals only. We consider it complex nutrients. So it will require enzymatic activity, therefore digestion in our body. It should be taxing for the body if you do it in between meal, and that will be disobedience to God because God said five hours in between one meal to the other one. So if you consider that, you have to be careful when talking about juicing. And that's not all. If you consider other aspects of the juicing, for example, especially at this time with these heavy equipment, heavy duty uh, blenders, where the blenders actually make the particles of the food very fine, very small, and then the absorption of those nutrients in the system is very rapid, you will see that those um, juices will actually cause some other problems in our system, especially bypassing immune recognition. Therefore, the immune system will not be able to recognize the food as it should be and will be considered a foreign body, even producing allergies and some other reactions, including autoimmune diseases and rheumatoid arthritis. Therefore, juicing is not really the 100% the way to go, the best thing to think about. No, it has many negative effects if you think about side effects of juicing. So be careful when you use juicing. I don't recommend it for regular. If there is a case, in life death situation, you know, you may consider it as necessary for us to do that. There are some times when juices may be used, small amount, not so uh, um, concentrated or very much blended, but we have to study. I would really recommend get the document, read about it, and see even the counsel from the servant of the Lord who wrote uh, some statements about it, and they will be very useful for you. Uh, taking the uh, stand whether I will use choosing or not. As I said, I don't recommend it, especially those that are combining vegetables or fruit, but I will do recommend in some cases that are really, really needed, especially cancer patients that are in the border of death and they don't have any energy. They are not able to eat. Their strength is really low and we may need to use it. I hope this is significantly enough to guide you in the knowledge and I, of course, encourage you, never take for granted what I said. Go and study for yourself and ask the Lord for guidance as He has promised that He will guide us in every step. Okay, that's talking about juicing, regular diet. We did not finish. There's a lot we can talk about, but I will not dwell too much about that. 
Smoothies with pomelo, aloe vera, grape, noni, or apato, yes, you can use all of those. Optional, not together, I didn't say together. For example, you can have grapes with noni, you can have aloe, you can have pomelo with aloe, because they can be combined, but um, and not, uh, for example, uh, pomelo with other things that are like vegetables. But aloe vera, pomelo, grapes, and honey are, have been used uh, in smoothies um, for cancer patients. They are very good. The pomelo can be used with the skin and the seeds. If you can do it, sure. It's a little bitter, but it is very useful for cancer patients. Make sure that you eliminate any MSG source as they are cancer feeders. They do um, induce more cancers, especially leukemias and some other cases. Remember the most common ones in the Philippines are Magisaraba, Ginomoto, Beijing, soy sauce, liquid aminos. So if you don't know about um, MSG, you want to do some research, you Google Russell Blaylock and you find his book, Cytotoxins the Day that's, That Kills, and you may find some other documents that are very good about monosodium glutamate and how they have been hiding in the food that we eat and we are suffering the consequences of eating those things. For a daily schedule of activity, please contact me so I can send the suggested schedule. Actually, I use one immune boosting schedule that Dr. Clark has prepared for patients and I, that's the one that I recommend and I can send it to you or direct you to Dr. John Clark if it's needed. But um, you can contact me to get more information. For cases where the cancer is exposed with a wound on the skin, essential oils are important. What is an essential oil? It's an extraction of an oil from a plant, for example, lemongrass. Lemongrass, if you make it a tea, you drink it. Lemongrass, but, which is called in Tagalog, tanglat. But lemongrass actually is, um, possess some oils inside, contain some oils inside that you can get out and use it for the um, wounds when it's needed. What you do is you just get one of these essential oils. It's not a lotion, it's not a fragrance, it is essential oil, that's the word. Essential oil is an extraction of the oil from the plant. And you can have lemongrass, you can have citronella, you can have eucalyptus, you can have chamomile, you can have clove, you can have Name it. There are many, many essential oils you can use. The ones that I have used most, tea tree oil, lemongrass, oregano, eucalyptus, uh, even castor oil. Those are oils that are heavy, very good anti-inflammatory, for example, castor oil. And what you do is you can pour them into the wound area that has a lot of debris and bad smell and even sometimes bleeding. You can use them for uh, those cases. If you think that it is burning, you can try a little bit. If you feel like it's burning, you can use it with a medium like other oils, for example, olive oil or coconut oil and so on. All right, what about teas that are good for cancer? Teas, there are many, 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 many things you can use for cancer. Uh, I have a book myself, Amazing Healing Plants, written here from the Philippines and I found so many. In the U.S. I have many. I had a big list of teas that I use with cancer patients for their diet. In the Philippines, there are many other plants also. One of those that is very significantly good in the Philippines is cuyabano, sour sap. You can use the leaves. You can also eat the fruit and it's good for cancer. But in terms of leaves for teas, you can use this. They are very good. And um, you can have also periwinkle, oregano, sibucao and many others. If you have available echinacea, red clover, uh, you name it, there are many others, you can use them. The bitter ones, as I said, even papaya, yes, serpentina, there are many other uh, teas that you can use. Aloe in itself is another herb considered good for cancer. And you can make tea of them and use them. Now I would recommend in the leaves, always do steeping, don't do boiling of the leaves the leaves should be steeping, or some people call it infusion. When you boil leaves, you kill the properties because it's too much heat. What you want to do is you want to boil the water alone. This is what is called steeping. You boil the water alone, 
And then when the water is boiling, you turn off the fire. When you turn off the fire, you can put now the leaves. You have a bunch in your hand, one liter of water, one liter of water, a bunch in your hand. Put it in. Of course, you have washed it previously. And then you cover it. Once you cover it, you let it cool down. 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe. Once it's cool, then you can drink it. And this is what is called steeping. No boiling of leaves. If you have a root, then you boil it. If you have a seed, you boil it. Unless you have powdered it. Powder doesn't need boiling. It's already broken. But when it is a root, like ginger, luyan de lao, and you just put the root, you must boil it. You don't get the nutrients out if you don't boil it. And you may even boil it one time, and boil it a second time, and even boil it a third time, you can still get nutrients from it because the nutrients are inside. What I recommend even myself is grate it. Grate it and then boil it a little bit because they are still big pieces. It's hard to get in and get the nutrients out. But if it's leaf or well grated, very fine powder, then you don't have to. You can just steep it. Or, for example, in the turmeric form, turmeric that is good for cancer, you can actually use it as powder, just raw like that. All right. Those in terms of teas. And I think that's pretty much enough for us to talk about cancer. Now, there are many things that we can talk more, but we don't have enough time. So my recommendation is, don't forget, you have my contact information. You can contact me anytime, and I will try to do my best to help you if you have a problem. Uh, I can refer you also to other cases um, that I have had before, which they may be good for you to give you encouragement and also to coach you because they are more than willing to help others that are going into the same situation they went through. And um, some of them are actually writing books and making videos about it because they are very happy of the help that they got by following God's plans of healing. So may the Lord continue blessing you and share with others the good news uh, about the healing that you can get from the remedies that God has given us. God bless you. Coming Broadcasting Network.